So welcome back to another video from me on this channel. It's been a bit. I've been busy doing other stuff, life and things, but today we're going to look at something pretty basic, nothing too exciting. The uh, ST4000 DM004 from Seagate, which is a standard sort of base model, 4 terabyte drive. You can pick it up for like $82 on Amazon right now as we're recording this video, which is pretty good. Um, this is a 5400 RPM, 256 meg cache drive, so nothing too crazy, but the value is really good. And we're going to kind of see if this is good for, you know, some basic NAS operations. That's where mine are going to go. So you can see the drive is thinner than uh, some of the past drives in this size, but, uh, you know, it's nothing, in, it, it's nothing crazy. Basically, they've just doubled up the platters. Um, if you look at some of, say, the older drives, I'm glad I have this Western Digital three terabyte here and you can see the th the thickness difference um the western digital here is like maxed out in the form factor and i believe these western digital drives had several more platters if i recall correctly and you can kind of see how the case is just blown out to the very end of the form factor whereas this uh, seagate drive significantly thinner so less platters is good and you can also see here this is an even older one terabyte drive from Hitachi and yeah, look at that. Like that that's kind of crazy how far we've come in the hard drives. And I'm pretty sure that uh, I bought those hard drive those Hitachi drives for double the price that I paid for the Seagate. So that that kind of gives you a clue of how how far we've come in that world. Anyway, that's just me wallowing on for a while, but we're going to take a look real quick at the formatted size of the drive. So, I just went and did a quick quick format of this drive. Basically, after formatting, we end up with about 3.6 terabytes, so not terrible. That's that's pretty standard for like an NTFS partition to, you know. That's that's basically it for the formatting size. There's nothing too surprising there, but uh, let's take a look at this cheap drive and its speeds and see if it's in any way good enough. Throwing open Crystal Disk Info real quick, we can see that. These drives are pretty new. They basically have almost no runtime on them, so we're good there. <laughs> sometimes you can, if you order these OEM drives in the original packaging like this, sometimes they, either if they refurbish them and they forget to clear it, or they've had them in some machine before. So it's good to know that it's, in fact, a new drive. Anyway, getting away from that, let's look at the speeds real quick. Looking at our ATTO benchmark, you pretty much kind of get exactly what you'd expect, about 180 megabytes per second read and write at the peak, specifically when we're talking about sustained read and writes, which in a NAS, for the most part, we're talking about sustained read and writes. In, in my NAS specifically, it's mostly just storing video and things of that nature, so really not huge in terms of... Dis if you're doing random reads and writes, this isn't going to be good for you, like small file size no way like that's just that's going to be total garbage you should probably avoid it <laughs> but for sustained sequential read and writes this drive does okay crystal benchmark says 195 megabytes per second approximately if we look at here um and atto kind of backs that up with nearly the same so is this drive cheap yes is it probably a good buy depending on what you want from it yes i'd say if you need an ass and you don't care about transfer speeds that are that fast mine are running in unraid so unraid's not exactly like a performance juggernaut in that space totally fine i recommend picking these up if if you have certain use cases if you need a lot of space and you're not really accessing it a ton even better um, so far these drives have been fine i kind of put this video off a little bit to um, have them run in my system for a while, and they seem to be doing okay after what is now three months in my Unraid setup. So I'd say you're probably okay to buy these if you're looking for some reliability. You know, maybe they're not going to be as robust as some of the, quote, NAS-specific drives, but I honestly have found that that doesn't seem to matter much. I have about equal failure rates amongst my NAS specific drives and my standard desktop drives. It kind of just seems like luck of the draw. Obviously, you're not going to get a warranty here, but hey, they're really cheap, so why does it matter? Anyway, thanks for watching this video. It was really short, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try to make some more soon. So, uh, talk to you later.